some of the areas that we're working on uh, applying VR for clinical purposes uh, involve psychological, cognitive, and motor. So, the psychological domain, uh, we've done a lot of work with post-traumatic stress disorder with actually putting people in simulations of the experiences that they had that they were traumatized by. In that work, I know at first blush it sounds crazy, like why would you make somebody go back and re-experience these horrific things that, that haunt them all the time? And my answer typically to that is we do it because there's a giant mass of data that indicate that this is an evidence-based approach for the treatment of PTSD, we call it prolonged exposure. The PTSD stuff is just one sliver. Um, you know, there's work with uh, kids with autism, uh, there's pain distraction techniques for people with acute and now chronic pain that can be delivered in VR. Uh, specific phobias for heights, for flying, for public speaking, these are all areas that are being addressed now. My colleagues are split into two camps regarding what they think about virtual reality. Um, and fortunately, over time, the negative camp is getting smaller. Back in 2000, I'd go to a psych convention, and there would be people that were thrilled that psychology might get some toys to play with, they'd get some technology, um, and they could see the vision. But there were naysayers that said, well, you know, you can't fix a problem just by throwing technology at it. You're gonna impair the clinical relationship. Uh, you're gonna put distance between you and your client. Well, you know, those are all things uh, that a cautious person, you know, should pay attention to. But over time, it, you know, it was found that, you know, you're not impairing any relationship. You're using a tool and the tool helps guide the relationship in some ways. And you're not using the tool for 49 or 50 minutes of the hour. You know, you're using it for 20 minutes and then processing. Software wins every time when it comes to more discussion of sad events, less worry about impression management, um, less feeling like you're being judged. Um, you know, it like unlocks a person uh, because it's a human form you can interact with. Uh, but there's no, there's no judgment, there's no risk. You can say whatever the heck you want. So these kinds of things pushing care more out into the community, but in an ethical fashion, I think is, is going to change the, the face of the clinical care over the next 20 years. It'll be, it'll be routine in 20 years. Mm -hmm.